Okay, cool. So we are here for the seventh edition of the Mastermind Group, the Sacred Inclusion Mastermind Group. And this is a very special one because Radha is, is a clarity coach who's going to lead us through a group session. Um, no one else on the call really knows what is coming next. And we're going to try to work through whatever comes up for us. So I'm uh, very excited. Thanks to anyone who's watching this. And thank you everyone for being here. We're uh, slowly, week by week, becoming a little family, in my opinion. So uh, this is great. I'm excited for what comes next. And I want to hand the floor to Radha. Uh, thanks for doing this and lead us away. You're welcome. So first thing I want to tell you is that um, I don't know what's going to come up either. I could possibly know what was coming up. And even though Ian is telling you it's a group session, I will work with anyone who individually wants to come to clarity on a particular subject. In order to make this a safe space, there are certain uh, rules that I ask everybody to be willing to follow. And that is one, confidentiality. So if you want to do work and you don't want to record it, please say up front that you don't want it recorded. And for the people in this meeting, what confidentiality means to me, and having lived on a small island for many years, you knew if people were honoring confidentiality. Otherwise, the, the coconut wireless, as we called it, you would have found out very quickly. So the idea is that if you are aware of something that happens today and you're affected by it, if you want to talk about how you're affected, if you want to share something about yourself, that's fine. But it's not fine to share something about somebody else. Because in order for us to really open up and see what's blocking our clarity, we have to feel safe. And so we have to know the confidentiality is going to be respected. The other thing I'd like to say is in any of the groups or seminars that I lead, there, there is no normal feedback. There's no place for advice. If you want to say after someone's worked, how you were affected by their work, that's fine. But you notice I'm giving it all back to you. In other words, if I'm talking about how I'm affected, I'm discussing me, I'm not discussing you. And that's the whole idea. So I'm always honored when anybody shares and when I get to work with anyone because people are allowing me to guide them perhaps to places that they haven't looked at and they surely haven't looked at it with me. So the first thing is that's how I see this. And I ask you to respect it so that the people feel safe enough to look at whatever they're going to look at. So in order to have this move along, I just want to explain to you that it is my experience that within each of us is a place of vast stillness. And it is from that stillness that clarity arises. It emanates just like peace comes from there or love comes from there. So when we do work together, I will ask you, is there an area in your life in which you would like clarity? It could be anything. It could be a relationship. It could be a communication with a child, with a sibling. With a, It doesn't really matter what it is. And then I'll ask you a few questions and you'll talk to me for a few minutes. And then I'm going to take you within and with a question that comes up for me from your work. And in a few moments, I'll ring the bell and ask you, what does your clarity show you? And you'll hear me repeat this over and over again. You want to trust the first answer that comes up for you. You do not want to second guess yourself. Clarity arises from the heart up, not from the head down. Our minds will only tell us what we already know or what we've already given ourselves permission to know. Our heart will tell us something very different because clarity will actually expose what is blocking us from having the life we want. So... You want to trust whatever comes up, even if you don't think it makes any sense. Do not allow the mind to come in and evaluate and judge your own experience. Okay. So that's all I have to say. And I open it up to anyone who would like to, if you just raise your hand, then I'll know you'd like to have clarity on something and we'll go from there. And if you have a question about what I've said, please ask me. I saw Joe Jeff put his hand yeah. up. Uh, yes, I was I was hoping to, to start it off um, seeking clarity about 
um, finances. It's, uh, I know it's a discussion Ian and I have, but just my relationship with finances in general, um, financial literacy, um, even in the jobs that I've worked, having like good paying jobs and whatnot, but not being comfortable in there and, and how that battle is gone. So just trying to find some clarity in that realm in terms of how I can get on track and be consistent and, and, and what will work for me in my, my lifestyle. Thank you. So first tell me what isn't working. Because you said what will work for you. So that means something isn't working. So if I'm going to ask you and everyone, I'll do the same thing. I will ask you to start a sentence with the same words I start. It's like a little shovel. So one thing that's not working in my finances is, and then you say the sentence and let's say whatever comes up and don't think. Um, one thing that's not working with my finances um, is typically the demand from the position. So whether it's, you know, putting in a lot of hours or being overworked or underpaid um, or not having like consistent enough um, income coming in, things like that. Um, it's, just, it's just not working the way I would like at, at this point. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to tell me three negative beliefs you have about money and finance, or if you use the word finances, because you didn't say money. Tell me three negative beliefs you have about finances. Um, that the system is going to crash one day and it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, to that in order to achieve, you know, stable or great finances, it's going to take a lot of time and effort, which won't allow me to enjoy um, a good quality of life. Um, and the third thing is, um, hmm. Stuck on the third one. I'm stuck that's on the okay. third one. Mm -hmm. Let's, that's all right. Let's stay with these two. Okay. So one, you think it doesn't really matter anyway because it's all going to come crashing down. So what difference does it make? Mm -hmm. Yes. Am I hearing you? You want to? I want to make sure I'm hearing you. Yeah. And two, you feel that if you earn the financial money that you want or feel you need, that it'll interfere with your being able to do what you want in your life because it'll take up so much of your time and energy. Am I hearing yeah. you? Yes. Okay. So I'd like you to close your eyes for a moment. Okay. And um, I'm going to ask you a question. I'll ask the question to you out loud twice. I want you to then take the question inside and ask yourself the question silently. And then you're just going to breathe. Do not think about it. Do not try to get an answer. None of that. All of that is just interference, actually. So you just ask the question and you just let it be. All right. So the question I'm going to ask you is. What if you could earn all the money that you feel you deserve? What would it look like? What would it look like if you could earn all the money you feel deserve right now? Now take the question inside. And by the way, the pictures can come in words, it can come in colors, it can come in uh, images. It's not always verbal. What does your clarity show you, Joe? Um, well, uh, the first thing I see is that it's, um, it's, it's coming from within my community, within the, um, you know, the people I love and close to, the matters and things that are close to us, whether it be um, music or learning or, you know, some type of artistic endeavors, community development, um, those types of things. It's real like um, 
like I said, community close knit as opposed to, you know, trying to go into some marketplace and make a difference and make a whole bunch of money to come back with. It just kind of seems like, a, you know, me and the team of people that are close kind of building and growing. And do you feel you have that in your life right now? Um, I, I believe, I believe I, I do as much as like the people and whatnot. Um, maybe it, it lacks infrastructure at the moment, but I think that um, there are like some women players, um, definitely skilled, um, skilled yeah. people who have like, you know, resources and uh, to know how uh, to assist me and assist us in the in the overall um in our overall efforts thank you so i want to ask you a question when i ask you what would it look like you tell me it looks like you're going to be part of a team but then you give me a array an array of areas in which you could participate in earning this money and i'm curious to know how that doesn't spread you too thin Don't go to your head, go to your heart. Can you can you say that again? I asked you what it would look like, right? For you to have, be the financially stable person that you would like to be. And you said it would be part of a team. Mm -hmm. However, when you said what you would do, you said an array of things, right? And I asked you whether or not that wouldn't spread you too thin. Right. Your first answer, do you, yes or no? Um, I believe it's possible it could, but with, you know, proper delegation and teamwork, um, it could work where I'm not spread too thin. I think I've, I've seen in my life um, in the past and currently sometimes where I do spread myself too thin and I, you know, I sign up for a lot of things or try to have, you know, hands in different pots. Um, but the way I see it, if it's if it's working how I imagine, it'll kind of be a evenly distributed load as as opposed to you know me carrying the brunt of the work. Okay, so if I'm hearing you, you're saying to me that although it has been your pattern to spread yourself too thin, okay, that you feel that being part of a team would help alleviate that because some of the work could be given to other people. Right? right? But if you want to do music, I'm just naming some things. If you want to do mm -hmm. music and you want to do art and you want to do sports, let's say that nobody else can do those things for you. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to become good at something that you feel you're good at, right? How do you do that if you have three things you have to do? Or mm -hmm. maybe four or five? I mean, I could understand why you would be afraid you don't have enough time and energy. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a question. Is it possible that your negative beliefs about money are what prevent you from focusing on one thing and taking it as far as you can? Just say the first thing that comes up for you. Don't think. Yeah. How are you impacted when you say when you say yes? Um, I mean, it's it's like a come to truth uh, type of moment where it's like this is down in there, and it may not in the moment it may not seem like that's what's going on. It may seem like you know other factors are you know what's involved, whether it's not having enough time or energy or motivation or whatnot, but um, it could definitely stem, you know, from, from that deeper point. Because if, you know, if, if we believe that money is the root of all evil, and I'm sure we've heard that, okay, mm -hmm. if we really believe that, and we have a, an ideal for ourselves to be a good person, we are going to be in conflict with earning money, mm -hmm. whether it's conscious or unconscious. And if we really believe that, then we're going to sabotage ourselves in order to feel like we're a good person. Mm -hmm. So we'll feel like we're really doing everything we can to make it financially, 
but we're actually in a battle with ourselves because we're caught in a duality. So that's what I'm hearing from you is that you have conflicting desires. And if I would have you do one thing, I would have you to sit down and write down 10 negative beliefs you have about money, about rich people, you know, all those kinds of things that you think, oh, well, that doesn't matter. They matter. But someplace you know, because you say this is a come to truth moment. So you must know that that it is your negative beliefs that are holding you back. Yes? Yeah. Or no? Thank you. You know, most of the beliefs that control our lives, we're not aware of. And most, if not all of them, we've learned at a very young age. They may have been true then, probably they weren't, but even if they were, they're surely not true now. So many of us are still living our life unconsciously fighting battles that have no, no, no place in our present day life. It's held in the mind, in our imagination and in our memories. Only we're really not aware of it. And this is what creates most of our suffering. Um, so I just want a clarity on why I lack uh, discipline and structure in my Tell me everyday your name life. again, please. Tell me your Brianna. name. Brianna. Brianna. Okay. What yes. a pretty name. Okay. So you said you want clarity on, on why you lack discipline and structure? Yes. Okay. Is that in all areas of your life? All areas besides work, which I'm, I, I feel obligated to do, but everything else falls by the wayside in my personal life. Okay, so let's pick one thing because everything is like a monolith. You can't, nobody can deal with a monolith yet. It's too overwhelming. So pick one thing, one area in your life that you know that you lack discipline in or structure. Um. I would say, I don't know, like maybe sticking to a routine or like holding myself accountable, if that counts. Um, sure, that counts. Yeah. Okay. So how do you treat yourself when you when you say um, you're, you're not being disciplined? I'm talking about how do you treat yourself in here? What do you say to yourself? I'm saying, oh, another day passed and you didn't do this or you didn't do what you said that you were going to do. Um, so kind of like beating myself up for it. Right. Okay. And so are you aware that the other side of beating ourselves up is the part that rebels, is the rebellious child who always wins? Always. I mean, you're telling me that that's what's happening. Yeah. You don't do it. You beat yourself up then why would you be motivated? Right. So just take a moment and think about, this is a learned behavior. Would you agree that you didn't come in the world as a little teeny infant being hard on yourself? Yeah. Okay. So, and we all have this, right? My favorite one is you're not good enough. You're never going to make it. Okay. So it doesn't matter what I achieve because as long as that belief about myself is in there, I'm never going to measure up. You, you see right. what I'm saying? So it isn't really what is accomplished. It's about what are the beliefs that I have about myself? Okay. Or others, but we'll say, just say with yourself in the instance. Okay. So when I say that to you, does that ring familiar to you in any way? that anybody yes. ever treated you that way? Okay. So whoever that person was, and we can name them X, it doesn't matter whether it's your mother, your father, your uncle, your aunt, your clergyman, it does, none of those things matter in mm -hmm. this moment. Okay, I'm not saying it doesn't matter to you. So if they were speaking to you that way now about you, 
what would be your first instinctive way of responding to that or reacting to that? What would you do? What would you say? I mean, I would stand up for myself and say, don't talk to me that way. You would? Yeah. Okay. Do you do that when you do it to yourself? No. Okay. So we're going to do an experiment. Obviously, you're not going to know right now because you're going to have to experiment. So right. I'm going to suggest to you that every time you find that you're not being disciplined, say, I give myself permission right now to not be disciplined. Because actually, I'm extremely disciplined about being undisciplined. You see how you laugh? Mm -hmm. Okay. In other words, if there is no counter energy to what's coming at us, then we believe it's true. And we act, react the way we have since we were little children. Because yeah. usually it's an authority figure, somebody older, who we feel really knows, right? Okay. So when they say to you, what's the matter with you? How come you didn't do what I asked you to do? Or you're never disciplined or whatever they're saying to you. Then we believe that about ourselves. Right. So at some point, we need to internally stand up for ourselves. So that voice begins to just dissipate on its own. Because right now, without realizing it, you're giving it permission to beat you up. Okay. And the more we give it permission, the more it beats us up. Right. So if you start to say, yeah, that's right. I'm lazy and I love it. It's like, give yourself permission to be where you're at because you're there anyway. Right. And see what happens if you say that to yourself and you do it consistently. You don't have to do it all the time because our mind can be negative 5,000 times a day. So let's just pick five times out of the day. Okay, let's be realistic. If you could do it five times a day at the end of the week, you're going to be completely differently affected because you're not going to believe that voice anymore. Right. And without realizing it, you're going to start doing the things that that rebellious little child was not willing to do. Okay. Think of it as a conflict. You're in a conflict. And I'm suggesting that you disengage. Okay? Once you disengage, the, the argument is over. The attack on you doesn't has any meaning. If I say you're lazy and you're defensive, it bothers you. If I say you're lazy and you go, you're right, I am lazy and I love it. Say that right now. Let's see what happens if you just say that. I am lazy and I love it. Say it again. <laughs> I am lazy and I love it. Again. I am lazy and I love it. And I'm not disciplined and I don't really care. No, and I'm not disciplined and I don't really care. You see that smile? Who is it that's smiling? Me. So if we don't take that heavy burden off our shoulders that we placed of judgment, and that's what it is, okay? Yeah. If we don't take that judgment off ourselves, we really can't do anything more than argue with the judgment. So then we're stuck where we always were stuck. You know, it's like the kid arguing with their mother. They're never going to win, but they're always going to say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Right. If for no other reason than to frustrate that the adult. Do you have any questions? No, thank you. Are you willing to do this five times a day for a week and see what happens? Yes, definitely. Good. Tell Ian to give you my email. I want to know. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So can I ask a question regarding sure. what just happened? Well, first, I feel like I haven't said a word yet. It felt like you're doing like a session on me. Very, I can relate to all of that. But so my question is, like, what if when I am saying maybe I'm undisciplined and I love it, there's like a voice in my head that's like, but you don't love it. like. I was like, I was kind of trying to go along. It's like that that battle's still there because I'm because she just said that and she was smiling. But a part of me was like, I was trying to, you know, apply it to myself, but there was that inner voice being like, 
you know, I don't love it. Or um, does that make sense? Sure. Because if all your life, you've been taught and everyone in your environment has been taught that it's bad to be lazy or undisciplined. It isn't like you'll naturally just say, oh, right. Of course I love it. No. But if you stay with it, understand if we're doing this, if I'm eating ice cream and I'm giving myself a hard time by eating the ice cream, but I'm eating the ice cream anyway, only I'm not letting myself fully enjoy it. Do you follow what I'm saying? This is no different. If you're going to eat the ice cream, enjoy it. I find that if I allow myself to be where I'm at after a while, it loses its power. And then without any, even thinking about it, I go do those things that I would have wanted to do or consider to be a disciplined person. In other words, it's because we're locked in these internal struggles that keep us really stuck in the past, really, not in the present, keeps us stuck in the past. So most of us, whether we know it or not, are having arguments with the authority figures in our lives from when we were children. We're either going to prove them right or we're going to prove them wrong. So if you're going to prove them right, you're going to show they're the best little boy or the best little girl and you do everything right and good. If you're going to prove them wrong, then you're going to show them that I don't have to listen and I can do what I want. But you were not a little boy. I am not a little girl, but we're stuck back there. The other thing is there is no parent here. So we're relating to a fictitious relationship that is a waste of energy. Most people are exhausted every day because of this. So what I'm suggesting is that if you're not going to be, do something, then give yourself full permission to not do it. And every time the voice comes up, but no, but you have to do it. No, I don't. No, I don't. Just remember what it's like to be like a little kid and bring your shoulders up and kick your foot and go, no, I don't. Because it is that little inner child that is actually rebelling still. And I'm saying, there's nothing to rebel against. You know, a great saint called Sri Narsagadatta once said, what you resist persists. Does anybody have a question about that? If you have a question, think about when you were a little kid. To a child, love means attention. So if you can't get the love you want from your parent in the moment, then you, you act up and you're naughty. Then you get negative attention, but you're still getting attention. That doesn't change as we get older. So we think we're resisting a certain behavior. I'm, today I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to do this and this. But really what we're doing is we're just giving into that same dynamic. You know, there might be a day in where you wake up and you don't want to do the 7,000 things that you know you should do today. Maybe you just want to stay in bed and be lazy. And maybe the next day you get up and you don't even give it a thought and you do 8,000 things. But no one, no one will ever know that if we don't give ourselves permission to be where we're at and accept that. Self-acceptance is the key. Did I answer your question? I don't know, but you gave me a lot to think about. So I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> if your brain, if your mind starts feeling like spaghetti, I know everything is working well. Okay, because I'm like inside your head going. Nur, 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 nur. Okay, so if that's how you're feeling, everything is great. And by the way, of course you relate to what everybody says because we're all the same. Even though everybody wants to talk about how different they are, okay, the reality is we're all the same. Right. So, right. so therefore, if I'm talking to one person about one subject, there's no way that every party couldn't relate to it, myself included. Hmm. I just want to read uh, Tamar put in the chat. I think that's powerful. I find the shame cycle is addictive in itself. And uh, shame. Yeah, I, okay. So I'm gonna uh, mute myself, and if anyone else, we, I think we got time for probably one more. So please. Two of the worst emotions for our human condition are shame and guilt. And basically what they are is self-abuse. 
That's all it is. It's self-abuse. You think about it. You see if you don't feel abused when you feel guilty. You see if you don't feel abused when you feel shame. Let me tell you what real shame is, okay? I'll give you an example. You're married. You cheat on your husband. You have such shame. You will never do it again, and you don't. Let me tell you what false shame is. You cheat on your husband. You feel terrible. You cheat again. You feel terrible. Three months later, you cheat again. That's false. So anything you think you have shame about or guilt about that you keep repeating, that's not what's going on. That's how you allow yourself to do it again. You know, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa. You suffered. You felt guilty. All right, now you can do it again. Do you see what I mean? Real guilt actually changes behavior. Real shame changes behavior. If I'm ashamed about the way I treated you, that's a very painful feeling in my heart. Real shame. And if it doesn't make me never want to do it again, then it's not real. Do you understand what I'm saying? The difference between false and real guilt and shame? It's really important because a lot of people throw around guilt as if it's nothing, when actually it's there to change behavior from within, not from without, just like shame. I did something, I knew it was shameful, and I will never do it again. And I don't. I don't have to talk about it. I don't have to say anything about it. I just will never do that again. Um. <clears throat> Oh, I was gonna say I, I kind of I think there's a lot in that too. Like in terms of a lot of the stuff that we really do that we will think of as like painful to do is really when I always look at it. I always the things I really have to do during the day is really not that painful to me, but I'll still like avoid doing it, even though like some things I even think is like fun, and I'll avoid doing it which is weird. So it's got to be something deeper in it, like where yeah. you can avoid things that you kind of like that you do. Okay, so give know? me three examples of three things you avoid that you like. One thing I avoid that I like is? Um, like I'll, maybe I'll avoid working out, but I like it. Like I like, but I'll avoid it too at the same time. It's kind of weird. Like I kind of force myself to be in like a room and be, but then I'll like maybe cut, I'll stop my workout to look at something on my phone or, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, what is this thing going on here? What is this behavior? Like where I'll get like a rush from it working out. But at the same time, like even getting to the point of like working out, is like this whole process. You know what I mean? Like it's this whole thing that it'll take so long to even get started. It's like, why did I take so long to get started on something that I like doing. What is going on here? It seems like it's something deeper. And okay, sometimes- so stop, 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 stop. You just asked a perfect question. Close your eyes, please, please. Okay. And I'm gonna ask you the question you just said. What is it that's going on inside of you that makes it so complicated for you to do something that you actually enjoy? What is it that's um, going on inside of you? Just listen. Listen to the question. Don't go to your head. Go to your heart. Listen to the question. What's going on inside of you on a deeper level that makes it so hard for you to do things you want to do, like exercise? Ask yourself the question. Trust whatever arises. Um, what comes up for maybe- you? I feel like it's like a avoidance, like I'm avoiding starting the day. Like I'm avoiding, maybe it's like this a need to not want to be successful at it, like not to not want, like in some way about like the results, the results are kind of scary in some way, like where you could, this is, I know it's like, I secretly know it's possible. Like I know it's possible. And then it's just like, oh man, it's, you know what I mean? You don't have no real excuses. Many people are afraid of success more than they're afraid of failure. 
And that's what you're telling me. I know I can succeed, but I'm afraid of what it'll mean. And so we do things to undermine ourselves so that we never have to have that face that fear. You're not alone in this. Many people are much more afraid of success than of failure. So you have the answer there. Did you hear yourself give yourself the answer, Joseph? Yeah. Do you believe yourself? I do. Good. I, do. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you hit the nail right on the head. Your clarity showed you exactly what it is. And if you'd like, on your own, you could go further and say, I'm afraid if I were successful, it would look like this. And if you paint, paint a picture. If you use a pencil, write it down. Whatever. In other words, let yourself expose to yourself what your beliefs are about what would happen if you succeed. Mm. I remember many years ago when I started my career, I was invited to go to another island and work with these top executives at their company. And this man said one line to me, and I remembered it because I knew it was, it, was, it was like from God's mouth. He said, the only person standing in, your front of, in, in the way of your success, Radha, is you. And even though I didn't know what that meant here, I knew here that he was telling me the truth. And so I began to do an inquiry to see, am I standing in the way of my success today? And just asking that question once or twice a day changed everything for me. Yeah, yeah I think I'll, you're going to have to implement that, like, too. Well, it's a discovery. I mean, you know, think I think of life as an adventure, okay? And we're all kind of discovering. So if you go on a, a self-inquiry, you're discovering. If I, you were going to write a story, what I'm afraid would happen if I were successful, I'd be the most selfish, most rotten, meanest person in the whole world, whatever. No one's going to see it. You can tear it up and burn it when you're done. But you've gotten it out and then you know what's what's underneath that's causing this rather than be a victim to it. Wow. Yeah, this, this is deep. It's deep. Like, uh, I'm, just, I'm like just thinking about tomorrow. Like, you know, thinking about like, all right, when I wake up tomorrow morning, if I could just wake up and have that clarity and then see like how different my day will be. Well, I want you to remind you that it was your question that I gave back to you. So you have a very wise, clear person or being inside of you that you just need to pay more attention to. You said to me, I know there's something much deeper than this. Mm. So not everybody would know that. And you do. So it's important that you acknowledge your own clarity and that you see that maybe if you allow yourself to just play with this, you know, don't take it on as a task, play with it. Oh, if I were successful, you know, you can make you sing, you make a song out of it. Right. You know, like Fiddler, if I were a rich man, da, 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 da. Okay. So, you know, like that, <laughs> you know, have fun. We mm. learn much better when we're laughing and our heart is open. Right. Oh, man, this is going to be scary. <laughs> What's scary? Tell me. Was um, it me singing? No. Okay, go ahead. No, like, <laughs> just going through the process of, um, like, peeling back everything like an onion, like, to get to, like, the core. You got to see what the, you know, what the true intentions and motives are. It's, uh... But you're scaring yourself right now. Because you see, when you peel an onion, you only peel one layer. You don't peel five, six, seven, eight layers to go to the middle. 
Okay, you only peel one layer. So today you peel the layer that you realize that you're afraid of your own success. Wonderful. When you're ready, you can begin to see, well, what do I think would happen if I were successful? If you would just be curious, hmm, I wonder what I think would happen if I were successful. That's all. See what comes up. So it's only one step at a time. See how the mind immediately tries to scare us from doing self-inquiry and getting clarity? Has this little scary story ready for us, just like that. Oh my God, this is going to be, you know, so frightening, peeling all the onions. No, 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 no. Your being will only allow you to go as deeply as you are ready to go. Right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, damn. Um, boy, I'm speechless. Um, Phil, uh, Rod Hodge just put a little master class on for us. And um, it feels like it could potentially be a continuation of this because I know there's like questions and uh, there's, there's, there's more here that uh, I could definitely explore, whether it's one-on-one -on -one in the future or in group or decide from there. But um, I'm going to wrap this up. It's about that time. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. That thank was, uh, like, I knew this was going to be special, but I didn't know how special. And it was definitely super powerful. Uh, I'm glad I recorded this one, too. I definitely feel like there's some things I want to like some processing that could help me watch um, while watching again. And uh, thank you to the group. Uh, I love y'all. So thank you for being vulnerable and be, be willing to be here and work on um, yourselves together. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, I think if there's any parting words want to share I just want to thank everybody oh. for for being open and um you know when Ian asked me how you could all support me I thought I love to do my I love to do my work with people you know my life purpose is to help people alleviate their suffering and live in their true nature and so thank you for allowing me to to practice with you Thank you. Well, I'm going to close with the fact that if anyone is watching this, uh, I believe Rod Hodge. He froze. <laughs> it was great. He was going great there. I know. <laughs> but considering they're on alternate energy, it's a miracle that they're on this. <laughs> We're stay early. Okay. Okay. I'm going to edit that out. I'm, I'm going to try again. We back. So okay. take two. Thank you. If anyone is still watching this, Radha, I hope I believe is available for one-on-one -on -one sessions. And also anyone in the group, you can I, I, I know that's something that I plan to do. Um I'm on the journey to eventually, hopefully one day, uh be a coach. And I would like Radha's gu guidance. And I would be lying if I didn't say that during this session, I was like, what am I doing trying to be a coach when we got people like Radha out here? But um, but that's there's that judge. Do you you're hearing that judge there? Uh, yeah, you're right. Any you're comparison, right. let me tell you, you have to know that's your ego mind talking. I mean, yeah, you're right. But I appreciate that. And I do know I can help people, but I'm I'll be lying if sometimes it's hard to not judge, especially someone, you know, that's been on the earth a lot longer than me and is just like spouting wisdom and guidance. Like it's just like second nature. But let us let me let y'all get to sleep. Have a great night. Appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Peace. I'll be in touch with everybody. And uh, yeah, amazing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Radha. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Radha. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah.